I will be revealing 10 things every cloud architect must know to excel in their job. From mastering the fundamentals to navigating real-world scenarios, I wanted to build this ultimate guide that will help you stay ahead in the rapidly evolving cloud ecosystem. So kindly hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and let's dive into the world of cloud architecture. My name is Ilias, I'm a senior solutions architect. Now let's do this. First things first, to be amongst the best in this job, you need to have a strong grasp on the basics. You know, take a step back and familiarize yourself with the various cloud service models like IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS, along with the different deployment models like public, private, hybrid clouds. So for instance, Netflix relies on AWS as its IaaS provider, and they share a ton of awesome content, by the way, on how they do so on their tech blog. And I'll leave the link in the description as well. While Salesforce operates on a robust SaaS model, they both leverage the cloud, but they do it differently. Number two, being well-versed in cloud architecture components, such as computes, storage, networking, security, it's a game changer. Have a look at how Spotify leverages GCP to efficiently manage its resources for handling millions of users through their engineering blog. Or how about Twitter? How about Reddit? I spent a ton of time uh, studying how these giants of the internet evolved with us, how Facebook is surprisingly uh, uses only two database tables to represent the social graph that captures the activities of its 1 billion users. Object table, association table, or how Reddit still operates to this day as a monolithic application. Well, the code itself is monolithic, but every Reddit sub gets its own cache cluster, its own storage cluster, its own queues, and that's how they're able to have them scale separately and avoid having one heavily used sub influence the performance of the rest. But the code itself is still a monolithic. Bottom line is, Compute, storage, networking, these services uh, cloud providers offer are but building blocks, you know, Legos. You get to assemble in order to build solutions the most efficient way. And I want you to look at them that way. Number three, programming languages. Now, this is a question as old as the cloud. Um, do solutions architects code? Well, no as we've established many times in the channel. But being versed in a programming language is a big, big, big bonus. Languages like Python, like JavaScript, Java, and Go are incredibly popular in cloud environments. A real world example is Dropbox, which uses Python across its entire infrastructure for flexibility and scalability. Now, should you be working with Dropbox, wouldn't it be a big bonus uh, knowing your way around Python? I think it can easily be the tiebreaker between your resume and someone else's who doesn't. Next, when planning a migration, you will need expert knowledge in analyzing application architecture, in selecting the right provider, in optimizing the application for the target cloud environment. Take a look at this interesting use case of how Capital One successfully migrated its critical applications to AWS. The challenges, the solution, and the outcomes are well defined should you want to study them. By the way, I dedicated a whole module to crowd migrations in SA Magic, my signature course where I help IT professionals transition to the role of cloud solutions architecture with a personalized plan and live support every step of the way. We go from studying the various migration approaches to reviewing the step-by-step -step guide I've been using for years for running successful cloud migrations. And I can't present a list without talking about security. So next on the list is the core principles of cloud security. Because security is a top priority in the cloud, or how Amazon likes to put it, security is job zero. So understanding and implementing robust security practices is an indispensable part of cloud architect skill set. And that involves identity and access management, IAM, data encryptions, compliance and auditing, incident response, disaster recovery, network security, 
You know, I've only recently got my AWS Security Specialty Certification, and I would love to give a shout out to the Cloud Security Podcast. I've been binge listening to their awesome content as part of my daily walks during my preps all along, especially their Cloud Provider series. So make sure to check them out. It's, I'm not paid, it's not sponsored. I just wanted to give them a shout out because I, I really appreciate it. By the way, if you're still watching, this will not be a short video just for the sake of making it short. We'll do our best in the editing to make sure you're not bored and you're still engaged, but this is too big of a topic not to cover properly. So if you're still watching, if you're getting value from our work, please give the video a like. We really appreciate it. And number six on the list is about scalability and high availability. Because it's not only giant companies like Amazon and Netflix that employ auto-scaling and load balancing and distributed systems to handle sudden traffic spikes and maintain seamless user experiences. Businesses of all sizes can tremendously benefit from understanding how to design and how to manage scalable and highly available systems. And that's why I included it in this top 10. It is of the utmost importance for cloud architects. Take auto-scaling for example. This is the process of automatically adjusting the compute resources such as VMs, containers, serverless functions, you know, based on the real-time demand of your application, of your service, because this helps in maintaining the desired performance during peak times and reduce cost during periods of low usage. For example, an e-commerce site should absolutely leverage auto-scaling capabilities to handle high demand during promotional events like Black Friday and Cyber Monday, right? Which means that a solutions architect must be able to design these cost-effective systems that adapt to varying workloads dynamically. High availability, on the other hand, refers to designing systems that maintain peak performance and minimize downtime during hardware, software, or network failures. I will remember you. This is achieved by implementing redundancy uh, at multiple levels, such as distributing workloads across multiple data centers or um, leveraging load balancers to divide the traffic among various servers. And by the way, using redundancy for high availability is nothing new, from complicated airplanes, navigation systems, to the braking pedal or steering wheel in your daily driver, engineers always make sure critical systems are redundant. So if one fails, the other one can kick in and ensure that you can safely park your car on the side, for example, until assistance arrives. Now in the cloud world, companies like Amazon and Netflix utilize high availability principles to ensure uninterrupted services to their users. Even in the event of components failure, even in the events of unexpected outages. So it's only natural that solutions architects who understand high availability techniques can design resilient systems that reduce the impact of unforeseen events and deliver a consistent experience to users. Next one on my list is how essential it is for cloud architects to embrace the power of DevOps to streamline their cloud-based application development, their cloud-based application deployment and monitoring. Okay, so let's take just a couple of minutes to explain the role of DevOps in cloud architecture through its principles. A, collaboration between development and operations. DevOps emphasizes a culture of collaboration between developments and operation teams, breaking down these silos and fostering continuous communication. And it's this unified approach that enables better alignment of goals and smoother execution of tasks, ultimately leading to faster deployment, higher quality services. Now in a cloud environment, adopting a collaborative mindset help you as a cloud solutions architect to design solutions that are more agile, more responsive to changing business requirements. DevOps practices promote the use of automation and minimize manual efforts and reduce errors during the software development lifecycle. By leveraging infrastructure as code, IAC tools like Terraform, AWS CloudFormation, a cloud architect can automate the provisioning, the configuration, and the management of cloud resources, ensuring consistency, scalability, and greater control of infrastructure. And if you've watched a few of my videos, you know how it's super important for your environments to be scriptable and to be replicable and easily destroyed and recreated. 
Implementing CI-CD pipelines is a core aspect of DevOps in cloud architecture because, again, that enables seamless integration of newly developed features or bug fixes into the main application and ensures faster and more reliable deployment. So it's a no-brainer to leverage services like Jenkins, GitLab CI to design and manage CI-CD pipelines that drive agile releases and promote a culture of continuous improvements. Now, these are but a few examples of how DevOps culture helps in cloud architecture. We haven't talked about monitoring, login, performance optimization, but this probably deserves its own video. So let's just move on to number eight on the list, which is the tools and technologies proficiency. Because some tools are just too important to ignore. Think about Kubernetes. Think about Jenkins, think about Terraform, Prometheus. Now these have become vital in today's cloud-centric world. I'm gonna go on a limb here and say that 90% of organizations I've worked with chose to use Logstash as part of the ALK stack for real-time log analysis. And the most important tool for continuous integration is still Jenkins. And it seems impossible to dethrone Jira or Jira for project management. So again, some tools are just too important to ignore and you have a lot to gain as a solutions architect by being proficient in them. All right, number nine, one of my favorite topics, the topic I want you to think about, which is cost management strategies like right-sizing, serverless technologies, resource monitoring, and you wanna use all these things to optimize your cloud spend. Now, gaining expertise in these areas will allow you to create more affordable, more efficient, and more sustainable systems that cater to your organization's needs. Let's linger here for a bit and do some exploration. First of all, cost estimation and budgeting. Now, when you are well-versed in cost estimation, you can make more informed decisions in selecting services, configurations, and provider plans that align with your organization's budget. And by accurately predicting costs, you can, as an architect, avoid unexpected expenses and ensure that your solution remains financially viable for the business. Number two, selecting the right pricing models, because Different cloud providers offer diverse pricing models, such as pay-as-you-go, reserved instances, spot pricing. So cloud solutions architects who understand these pricing structures can select the models that best suit their needs, balancing performance requirements with cost savings. And this alone can lead to substantial long-term cost reduction without sacrificing application efficiency or reliability. There are also more aspects to this, like right-sizing, like how to use serverless technologies and microservices that only consume resources when actively running, like uh, cost monitoring and analysis strategies, or implementing cost governance and policies. But I think I will have to dedicate a different video for this subject, so just stick around for when it comes. And we reach number 10 on my list of the top 10 things every cloud solutions architect must know, which is staying updated like a pro by following industry news, by attending events, by joining cloud-related communities. And I personally spend a ton of time uh, browsing Reddit subs, LinkedIn groups, and listening to podcasts. It's actually became a staple in my day-to-day, -day. whether I'm working out, going out for a walk, doing chores. And that's because, you know, you find many renowned cloud architects and engineers active on these forums, and you get to interact with them. You get to ask them questions, and you get to learn from them. Okay, now that we've unveiled the top 10 things every cloud architect should know, it's time for you to take action and elevate your game. I want you to share your thoughts, share your questions, and share your experiences in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome cloud-related content, if I say so. Until next time, keep soaring in the world of cloud architecture. Peace out.